Hi, my name is Joe Jackson. I'm an interviewer, journalist, author and broadcaster. And for the first decade of the 21st century, I did for an Irish radio station, RT Radio 1, a music series titled Under the Influence. No, it wasn't about drink. Sadly, that title was subsequently used, stolen consciously or otherwise, for a similar MTV show. So now, after revisiting the master tapes of those interviews, I've decided to turn the best into a podcast series called The Music That Made Me. I may even add the subtitle, Made Me Want to Make Music. Either way, what follows is a clip from one of those shows. And this is not so much a song that made the subject Peter Sarsted want to become a star. It's a song that made him a star and that so many of us love. Where do you go to, my lovely, when you're alone in your bed? Is, is where do you go to a doppelganger or anything to you now? Do you kind of, does it hang around your neck? Do you say, oh God, not another conversation about that song? Or do you feel I'm, I'm proud of it? It's one of the best... It's a very resonant pop song for many people of its time and still. Well, it's it, it's had a new lease of life with the internet because now uh, you know, I've got a website, so people write to me about their experiences, uh, sort of in and around it, and the whole right. generation has, right. has aged up through it and so sort of grew up through it and have had their children and named some of them name their children after after the song Marie Claire. There's a lot of Marie, really? Marie Claire's out there. Uh, writing me, r writing to me. How does that feel? Because I mean, yeah. I too was listening to it again this morning, and I thought, well, I heard it as a kid, mm -hmm. and I was too young to get the, uh, the 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 end. You know, the the woman who sells her soul to be yeah. part of high society. But then you meet many men and women like that, and you suddenly go, Sarstead got it right. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's it's a, 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 a lot of great operas and operettas and uh, are, are based on this. A woman who makes it from nowhere. Um, La Boheme and yeah, things like absolutely. this. And so it's a traditional story of a rags to riches, right. but there's an underlying uh, horror in, in her life. What is that mystery? And this happens time and time again in art. I didn't know this until Riz, you know, someone pointed it out to me. He said, but that's the same story as so-and-so, okay. as Candide. <clears throat> it's the same story as everyone, that you've got a lot of lists of it. So, and I... I did it automatically. Okay. Uh, so but was it based on a woman you met on those travels, or um, a, an amalgam, or what? I mean, I'd met a few French women who completely amazed me. Right. Uh, as soon as I got to the continent of Europe and started meeting people there, I was completely amazed by them. I was over overwhelmed. I thought these are, these people don't come from Croydon. They're right. they're wonderful women right. and they're right. incredible people. And uh, of course, not being able to speak uh, French all that well. You fantasize about them, and, right. and, and so you put them, you put them on a pedestal even more. Okay. Uh, and this is this song is like that. It's sort of pedestal making. It's saying, like, what are all the, uh, you know, what are the cultural references that you've overheard about Europe? So you always knew that Marlene Dietrich had this weird voice, and Cesar okay. Charmaine was a great dancer. Yeah. So it, if you look back on the song, you sort of, it's like a road map to a, a quick sort of cultural. Yeah. Yeah. Whip around Europe, you know, which but is. But it wasn't was a doing. person who actually stole no. a painting from Picasso no. or any of that, you know. Picasso's estate would be no. after yeah. her anyway. I, mean, I start to get <laughs> mad. I mean, as uh, after a while, I'm going insane, you know, in the song. I'm, it's getting more it's and getting... more exciting as it goes on. And suddenly, when I came to the point, I think I'll name this person, you know. I mean, I hadn't actually thought of the name right. at, at at the start of the. That's the way songwriting is, you know. You just start off, and you and then it ends in in a completely different way to what it began. It's like a sort of Chinese whisper to yourself. All right, but the way it ended for a lot of people is, is the kind of real punchline of the song. In any wonderful story, if it's, if it's going to have a nice, you need an ending. Yeah. You, you, you must have a twist in a the twist. I like a twist yeah, in the absolutely. end of all stories I read anyway. I, I, that's why I don't read the last page first, because okay. I'm waiting for that, that twist. Just, you know, twist at the end. Okay, Peter Sarr said, we're coming out of Where Do You Go To, My Lovely. Now, do you recognize these lines? I'm sure you do. Your age between 20 and 30, a very desirable age. Your body is firm and inviting, but you live on a glittering stage. Yes, you do. Why are they uh, censored? Because um, it's printed. That lyric was fully printed yes. in the NME, oh, yeah. but it's, it's not. It's on the album. They said, well, uh, you know, it, you can leave it on the album. Because no but not on the single. Not on the single, because it's going to be played early in the day, and you, you don't want things about... And that sort of firm and inviting firm bodies, and inviting bodies, or something. What's that? That's more like your other stuff, Peter. Oh, this is the, the obscene lyrics you were writing that, yeah, were, that were embarrassing your mother. And how did you know her body was firm <laughs> and inviting? 
Uh, well, well inviting in a fantasy I can get, but firm you have to have first-hand knowledge, if I may say so. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I, I, I don't know. In, in, You've in met way, many firm French women. Tell us the truth, Peter. Yes, they met me. Uh... Hi, Joe Jackson here again. I thank you for listening to this edition of the Joe Jackson Interviews podcast, which, given its brevity, I call a single. More can be heard, full shows or otherwise, and some of my articles can be read at joejacksoninterviewer.com.